Welcome back, fishing friends, to another fishing adventure. Hey, I got mystery tackle box number two in. So let's check it out. See what it, we got in here. Let's get this unfolded and open. What's going on with this? All right. So let's take a look and see what's inside. So we got the 13 Fishing Gordito, Gogan, the Guggen Squad Zinger, the Weston Stickworm, Carl's Amazing Baits, Kicker Craw, and then of course the Harmony Hooks. All right. So let's take a look at this. Well, here's the Gordito right here. Gordito in Spanish is fatty or little fatty, coming from, stemming from the word gordo, which means fat. Here are the Harmony Hooks. I had these in uh, the last box, and of course those are going to pair up with something else in here. And here's the zinger. That looks great. Up north when I'm pike fishing up there, man, I love using inline spinners and uh, spinner baits. Alright, here we got Carl's amazing baits. So this craw right here looks nice and juicy and we got the Weston Ooh, what does it say on there oh Scandinavia the stick worm all right and there's just some tips on where to fish and then a sticker that's pretty cool all right so the first mystery tackle box just absolutely nothing was biting so I'm going to start off using the, the jig with the craw trailer for the other box. And then I'm going to move into um, maybe the gordito that looks pretty good. I'm in a different place today. I'm, I'm not in Oklahoma. I'm not where I, one of my favorite spots here in North Texas. So let me get geared up and we'll get started. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye. All right, guys, so here we go. In here, we've got this Guggen Baits, or excuse me, the Missile Baits Ice Headbanger Jig. And we also have the Big Bite Swimming Craw. On the other rod, I've got the Guggen Baits Lunker Log. So we'll get to that if things don't work well for this jig. But uh, you've seen this spot before. I love fishing here. Not much wind today, nice and calm. So let's see what we can get. Just using my usual setup with my Lose Speed Spin 300 and I've got my ugly stick. Oop, what the heck happened there? Oh yeah, that looks juicy in there. Man, that looks good. The water is a little bit shallow. Let's see if we can get something out of here today, though. There's a big cold front coming in tomorrow afternoon with a chance of snow even for here in the pan, uh, in the North Texas. The panhandle is going to get slammed over by Amarillo and Lubbock, but here we should be 
a rainy sleep mix, but I checked the barometric pressure and so far it's held st steady from yesterday and today, so. I mean, it's a little chilly, but the fish, you know, they're, hopefully they're biting. There's usually quite a bit of action along the rocks here, so that's why I'm starting here, not necessarily uh, over on the dock. One of the biggest fish I ever caught out of this lake was right under the, the dock there on a micro fishing jig. It was a little trout magnet kind of thing, and it was in December actually, about two years ago. Maybe a year ago. And man, that sucker hit and that was all she wrote. Huge bass. Hadn't seen any, any of the gar. The gar was always, were always out in the hot weather the summer, but man, I hadn't seen any of them. Ooh, 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 ooh. Dang, I felt a thump. Might have been that rock bass. We had a nice thump right there. I'll go back in there in just a minute. So what I'm doing, I'm just bouncing this jig off the bottom a little bit, giving it a couple cranks, bring it in kind of slow, a couple more cranks. I don't know if you can see that in the water, but man, it looks good. See if a bass or Mr. Rock bass. Am I snagged? That may just be what it is. Ew. That's what it was, snagged. All right, well, since we're over here, let's go ahead and move out to the dock. All right, guys, we're over at the dock. I'm still throwing the the jig with the Big Bites Crawl trailer on there. I don't know, I came over here and the water looks deeper. Man, look at that, looks good. We had some rain about a week or so ago and up here I'm not sure exactly how much I got but 
as you come in it looks shallow along that little walkway but here it looks like it's just fine There's some nice striper in here. They say there's walleye, smallmouth. I've never caught a smallmouth in here. Walleye, I've only heard of stories, and that was back in the 90s. Striper, I never caught one, but I saw a guy pull one out. guys so nothing on this so far so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it up all right guys there's the Weston Scandinavian stick worm it's blue we're going to give it a shot out here hopefully we'll get something I just had something drop right over here by me splash so we're going to give this a shot and hopefully we'll Get something to take a swipe at it. Oh, there it is. It's like a little coot over there that was splashing around in the water. One of those little grebes or whatever. Man, it's a perfect day to fish. It's calm. It is a little chilly, but got to have something bite today. I don't know if you guys can see that, but man, when it falls, it's got a nice juicy action. That's good stuff. We're gonna try to get it over by that log and tree over there. There we go. So the line I'm using is 12 pound braid and I've got 20 pound fluorocarbon leader on there. So far so good. Never have any issues with the fish freaking out about the line. It's good stuff. I've even used it this summer. Trout fishing, I used the braid and they didn't even bother them. If you saw some of my other videos in there that You know, a lot of people complain about 2020 and what a crazy year it was. For me, it was pretty good in a lot of regards. I had so much good luck fishing, got to explore some new places. And I just, you know, had a lot of fun. And yeah, with, you know, the lockdown and all that sucks, but there were some good things that happened in 2020 that, you know, maybe for you, you know, you kind of look back and say, oh yeah, there were a couple good things. Man, I 
always have great luck right along that rail there. There's that little fellow splashing around. I don't know what that is, some kind of a coot or a grebe or something. Smells like somebody's burning mesquite wood out here. It smells good. Like a campfire. Man, if you've never smelled mesquite being burned, whew, you're missing out. That's a good smell. Speaking of mesquite, if you love barbecue, go over and check out my buddy Mike's Bowers Barbecue page on YouTube. You can watch him get fat over there all the cool things he's making. I think he did a pulled pork the other day. Great video on that. Easy way to, to do a pulled pork. Talk about mesquite. That's one of the key flavors in barbecue that you gotta have from time to time. Mesquite smoked. Mm. Or like a mesquite barbecue sauce. Yum, yum. That's good stuff. All right, guys, I'm gonna run this along the rocks and we'll see what we get here. a little bit there.
All right, let's try the point. We'll see what we get over here. Man, that looks juicy down there. How in the heck I may not hit in this thing? And that thing looks just too good. I don't know why they're not hitting it. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna try out the Guggenswad Zinger. Couple blades on it, nice color. Let's give it a shot. Some of the biggest pike I ever caught in my life were on a good old fashioned spinner bait and on inline spinners. Oh man, it feels good in the water. <laughs> It's got a nice feel to it when the blades kick in. Yeah, it's looking good. So usually with a spinner, I don't go too fast, I don't go too slow, but I will pause it and I'll lift the rod tip up just to change it up a little. 
had some hits on the pauses as much as I've had hits as soon as it hits the water or just swimming along what's cool about it is when you do the pause it just nose dives and it looks really good and the thing is there's big fish out here I mean there's now that one I caught here along the dock was over four pounds easy and they also do a lot of high school fishing matches out here they do the high schools here a couple of them have fishing clubs or fishing teams so they come out here for tournaments now for like a big tournament nah. but I do know the Bass Masters is coming out here this spring to uh, Ray Roberts which is just south of here I'm over near Gainesville Texas so just south of here on Lake Ray Roberts this spring they're gonna have the Bass Masters so I got to figure out um, how that's what the dates are because I'll be down there to check that out for sure I have to go to the website and see what's going on I don't think the virus will really have affect that very much since they're on their own boats and out in the water maybe if they have a cameraman with them or something or weigh in might be a problem but they'll get that all sorted out man this thing feels great in the water hopefully we can catch something I don't want to go two weeks in a row without catching a thing that's that's no fun I don't know if you can see that down in the water. Man, that looks good. All right, guys, I've been using this for about, oh, 30, 35 minutes. So I'm going to give her one more cast. Then I'm going to switch to the Gordito crankbait. I'm going to switch it up. Let's see what we can get with the gordito. All right, guys. Here's that little gordito. It's a, looks like a little craw. Nice and brownish, kind of goldish brown on top. On the bottom, it's got that orange. And this thing says it'll get down to seven feet. It'll dive. 
So let's give it a shot and see how it goes. Feels pretty good in the water. Oh yeah, that thing looks good. Look at the wobble on that thing and it is nice and balanced. It's not coming in crooked or anything. Wow. So much of the time you gotta reset those things and adjust them. This one's set nice. This thing's got some great action. This is probably when I hit get a, ooh, there was a thump. Did I get something? No. Dang. Dang, something hit it. This is probably the lure that's gonna get the next gar. I don't know where the gar are, what, what they do in the winter time. But man, in the summertime, they're like, they, look, they have that sleek submarine look, but man, they float on top like a pontoon boat. And they love to hang around the surface. Hadn't seen any since probably mid-September. There goes somebody else with a chainsaw. I guess it is a weekend and people are trying to get their projects done. But man, oh man. The noise.
All right, guys, one more cast. Then we're going to switch it up again. All right, guys, so we're gonna test out this Jenko Rip Knocker. Remember, this is that one that has a unique design to it, where you thread the line through and it moves up and down, keeps the fish from throwing the, the hook and the lure. So we're gonna give it a shot. Hopefully, this will be the bait that gets the job done. It's been brutal out here. I'm kinda curious to see the action on this thing in the water. feels smooth it's got a nice vibration to it this will probably be the one that catches the five pound bass or striper oh yeah check that out in the water man that looks good All right, this thing sm feels really smooth. Oh yeah, it's got nice action in the water. Check that out. Oh, and it dives and it's got the rattles in there. That's a pretty cool little lure. Man, it feels great. In the water, it's got that diving action. Especially when you, you stop casting it on nose dive. This is when we need to catch that big bass or a striper. Oh yeah, that looks great in the water.
I don't see the squirrels out today. They're usually dancing around there, getting pecans and acorns and racing up and down. Even in the fall, I always see them. One time I saw a raccoon even over there early evening. He was out cruising the bank. Yeah, this bait is good stuff right here. Smooth. It's got that unique design. This thing would be perfect for deep lake fishing, like if you're up in Lake Superior. Clear water, you could see that thing down in the water. Look at that, easy to cast, just sails. All right, guys, I'm going to give it one more cast. See what we get. Been throwing this for a little while. Nothing so far. But it's starting to get a little bit late in the day. All right, guys, just a couple more casts. I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Starting to get a little late. It takes me about an hour, 10 minutes to get home. Back to the world, worldwide headquarters. Got some other stuff I'm working on, so... see what's coming up last two times I've been out they just hadn't been hitting man and I've tried everything Oklahoma's where I'm going to try again up in the refuge. I had a lot of fun fishing up there. Even though I didn't catch anything, it's just having the geese up there. So it's a new year, so they're sending me my new fishing license. I get one of those cards. I do a year long out of state fishing license with Oklahoma. I don't mind supporting the, the conservation efforts they do. When it comes to fishing license, I just, I never really worry about the price. Even when I go up to Iowa to fish and I get the out of state seasonal and the trout stamp, I don't mind paying that. It's going to a good cause. The cool thing about uh, here in Texas is that you've got coastal waters, you got the ocean, saltwater fishing, freshwater. And so it's kind of a cool, fishing license to get 
Oh, that's a good spot right there. A couple years ago, I went down to uh, Port Lavaca spent a couple days down there. I was interviewing for a teaching job down there. Thank goodness I didn't get that job because about two months, three months later, whenever it was, is when Hurricane Ike, I guess is what it was, came through there and just leveled the coast. And the town there was under 20 feet of water. I mean, apartments, homes, even storage facilities were underwater. Yeah, it was some crazy stuff. But anyway, I tried saltwater fishing down there off one of the piers. Nobody was out there. I used some lures and I had a lot of those needle fish and, and uh, some of the sea bass chasing it and I caught some. But then uh, one of the locals told me to go pick up some shrimp from a little gas station there, a little bait shop in a gas station. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing that. I caught all kinds of stuff. And I never really done saltwater fishing before. I mean, when I lived in Spain, uh, you know, we got to see some people fish along the coast in the Mediterranean. And, you know, when I've been on the Texas coast before, I've seen other people fish, but I never really had fished before in the ocean. And, I was just using my regular gear <laughs> off this pier and it, it was pretty cool. A couple showed up there around noon and uh, the guy was telling me that he'd caught a pretty good sized shark off that pier once on one of his, I guess he gut hooked a, a redfish or a sheep's head or a one of those drums and he um I don't know I guess it was bleeding or having struggling down there anyway the shark just came up and hit his his fish and he caught it but you know the thing was the he was using just a piece of shrimp and so he wound up catching the the redfish or the the other one but the shark it wouldn't hook it just it wouldn't let go so they he got the thing in and his wife helped him get it up there and then finally they got the thing to out they just had to cut the line so maybe i'll have to do that again sometime go down and do a coastal fishing video that was before I did any kind of GoPro stuff. All right, one more good cast off the point here, and then we'll wrap it up. Man, that thing just sails out there. Hats off to this Jenko. Man, this is a cool bait. You could even use this thing for trolling up on the Mississippi or up on the Minnesota lakes and up north. There's no doubt this thing is going to get a nice northern or a musky. It's got great action in the water. Coots being silly over there. All right, guys. So I'm going to wrap it up. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I know sometimes it's, you know, it's a pain in the butt when there's nothing's biting, but it's good to get out and get some fresh air. So if you stuck along to see me not catch anything, I appreciate it. You know, I know it's, you know, a always better when you're pulling stuff in left and right but uh you know how it is with fishing i mean it's 
hit or miss sometimes but anyway appreciate you hanging out uh hey like i was saying before if you never signed up for mystery tackle box go for it you know check it out see what's in there you can always change up what you want uh the first two boxes i got were like a bass box i'm going to keep those going and then i might switch over to trout as we get closer to the summer so we'll think see how things go uh with that but anyway thanks for hanging out and until next time i'll see you guys then bye bye